Today, we will put on a new master cylinder for the clutch, and I'll walk you through how to do it. So first thing I like to do for some, I do something like this is print out the procedure. Uh, I got this off Pelican Parts. You can just Google whatever it is you want to do. So clutch master cylinder, Porsche 944, install. Then Pelican Parts, it shows up. Uh, today, we're gonna have to remove just all these lines right here. Our cylinder is right down there. We'll be able to see it better in just a bit. But we're actually gonna start out inside on the floorboard. All right, so the first thing you might wanna do is remove your seat. So if you are a tall person or a large person, this procedure might get a bit hairy because we're gonna have to slide on our backs underneath there and then look upwards and work that way. Uh, so I'm not gonna do it, I'm pretty average. I'm just gonna slide the seat all the way back and suffer. Okay, so in the car, we've got the clutch pedal. Here it is. This black cover is gonna need to come off. There's a little pin and all we're gonna have to pull, or a little locking tab, whatever you wanna call it, that's gonna help it release the push rod in the back. So it's gonna be easier to get to it if we can remove this first. And shouldn't be too bad. You can see there's a plastic bolt or nut right there. There's one over here. There it is up in the corner, right up there. We'll remove those. There might be another one back there, but I'm gonna find them and we'll pull that little cover off. All right, we got two of the three off for that black box. The last one, of course, is requiring some custom approach here. So in extending it, cannot really reach it and it's back up in a corner. So I'll try to take you with me, but I'm kind of showing you uh, how I'm going about this. I'm getting in the seat, going that way. And then I'm sliding my head down there and my feet end up up there. <laughs> this is how I'm going about it, but it, it is working. Okay, so I'm gonna try to show you this last one. All right, that last one, if you can see it, there it is up in that corner, the little black plastic nut. That is the one that's hard to get to, cannot see it the other way. But with our extension, I'm gonna have to put you down to make it happen, but we're gonna get that thing off. Praise the Lilia, the box is off. So there's one sideways screw and there's two straight up and down. One, two, there you go. All right. And now you can see on the clutch pedal, there's that tab right there. So we're going to pry that up, slide it off to get it off. And then we can take off the head and the pin right there. And then we will unbolt from the other side and pull it all through. And we'll put that head slash adjustment piece on the new piece. You can see I've got mine pried off. So I got the clip off, washer off. Let's see if I, oh, there we go. Yeah, that thing's spring loaded, be careful. See that little white bushing right there? Do your best not to break that. Mine's not, mine's good and intact. It's supposed to be that way. Uh, first time I ever did this on a different car, I broke one of those. Thought, eh, no big deal, I'll just replace it. Well, they're really hard to find. I think I had to get off eBay. So try not to break it. Try to keep it intact. But this one's free now. And I'll work that little bushing off. And then we'll start working on the other side. All right. So inside, this is what we got. So here's the little bushing right here. Ooh, that just rides on. It's called a clevis pin, I think. I don't remember what that thing's called. Rides in the hole that goes on the uh, pedal. Here's the washer that goes on the outside of the clip. So what I did was I just took a flathead and pried this piece up. And when the piece is up, you can slide it back. So it lifts up over the little head on the pedal. Then you can slide it back and you're free. But this little tab clamps it down or catches it so it won't slide off while you're doing your pedal work. Okay, then we have the three things holding that horrible cover in. I cannot guarantee that all three will go back in. 
All right, now we are back in the engine bay. So right here is where we got to clear out. So my suggestion is take pictures of everything. Take a picture of your vacuum lines, everything you remove, take a picture of it or do a video like I do. This is part of the reason I like doing this. I can go back and I can watch where I went wrong. So we're gonna remove these piece by piece just to get down to our cylinder, which is right there. So once we get these pieces out, we should be able to see it better. All right, so I've got some hoses where I can pull them out of the way. And of course, it goes a clamp. Pull these back, got the vacuum off. I unscrewed these two right here. We're gonna take that little cap off. We're gonna unplug this pin and this plug unit here. It's, I'll show you what it looks like once we get it off. And then we'll kind of route that out of the way. And then we'll be able to see, you can already see it a little bit better, our master cylinder down there where the yellow bolt is and or yellow nut is and where the blue hose is printed okay so now we can much better see our cylinder down in there see that see where that's uh, lines coming in so we're going to loosen that here in a bit you can see the cylinder itself you can see the bolts that are holding it it's still a little bit of a pain to get to but we can get to it at this point. Uh, also show you that pin. Looks like that. So when you pry this up, you know, just be gentle. Don't go crazy. Just kind of work it up easy. And these pins all just need to slide on out. All right, well, I got <laughs> the nozzle came off. So we'll have to figure that one out how to get that clamp off and whether or not we actually keep this hose because look at that not as great a shape as I thought it was so we'll be picking up a new hose instead and uh, we'll keep working here we'll get this cylinder out Let's see it down there next step is going to be I think I'm gonna see if I can loosen this before we unbolt it there all right this is a 12 millimeter I call it a crow's foot. I think that's what it's called. This is the type of thing you want for working with brake lines. And I just broke that one free. No trouble at all, which is very sus because I always have trouble with these kind of things. But this thing will help you make sure you don't strip it. It gets it, you know, like a normal wrench. But then also on the uh, open side too, it does have a little connection. So you slide it over the pipe and then down over the nut and crack it loose. Now that it's cracked loose, I set it to the side and I'll go get my 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter wrench open-ended and be a little easier to get it off the rest of the way. All right, so that was probably the easiest I've ever had it. Which is cool, I'm not complaining, that's great. So you can see here, I've got the line out. So you got the little nut that slides up on it and into place and secures it and then the line itself looks really good so i've just pulled it out now we can take the cylinder out and i'll show you how i go about doing that part next all right the secret to success is going to be an extension and then this universal pivot thing for the uh ratchet and that is the 13 millimeter uh, drive on the end or socket on the end and there you go you can see it down there with the angle i can turn this how about we go left and loosen. there we go and i've already loosened the other one we can back these out and i'll show you a trick so you don't drop them a little bit of grease in the socket will help you not drop those nuts they'll stay in there ta-da all right, the old cylinder is out. So I just, once those bolts are off, just work it out of the spot down there. You can see the little hole where it goes. Just kind of, I came out. Of that, that thing was out of the way, but I came out right through there. Just kind of worked it out to the side. And then as we put it back together, we'll reverse that and work it back in. So this is the old one. You can see right here, really wet in there this thing had failed the boot is all shredded and there's a lot of fluid getting in there and this was our failure point we're going to 
take this piece off right here and take note. Don't just go and take it off, but note how far down it is, how many threads you have, because we're gonna need to do the same distance on that one. So take this piece off and put it on that one and then reverse install. All right, it is tightened back down. I counted four threads on the old one. So I've put it roughly the same. They look a little different but it looked pretty close. So uh, we will just stick this back in. We're gonna thread it through. I think we'll bolt it back in place first. I might try to start the brake line on here first before I bolt it in all the way, just to get it started. Then I'll probably tighten it down and then tighten up the brake line or the uh, clutch line. Sometimes it can be a notorious pain to get it to catch and to go back in so it might be a better idea to tighten it down and then do it or I'm not sure we're, we'll fiddle with it I'll tell you whatever ended up working for me we're gonna work it in you can see the hole is back there so I'm just kind of working this back and in we're probably not gonna be able to do it with a hand on the camera but we'll angle it through back into place and then we'll bolt it in and well, first we'll see about how to best get that line back in there. All right, so I was able to get it threaded back on without too much trouble. What I did was I kept uh, it loose so you can see down there. Let me get the focus for you. I don't even have the nuts on, they're right here. So I just slid it onto the post and kept it loose so that I could wiggle the cylinder up and down because I think the angle is everything with getting that to take because uh, you just like any other uh, brake line hose fitting it's super fine thread and if you have trouble with it just keep adjusting the angle until you get it right and just hold your teeth right say a prayer I don't know something just causes it to finally take and then you breathe a sigh of relief so that one is on there I got it just kind of snug and now I will bolt down the other two bolts back there. If you can see that, I don't know. There we go. I'm going to stick the other two bolts on. So same thing, using the angled, uh, universal angle drive adap adapter. Pretty sure if you Google that, that's, that's what you'll get. Just kidding. I have no idea what this is called. But uh, put a little bit more grease on it. That'll hold the bolts in place. We'll just stick them on there. We'll crank them down. All right, we are in place. So the new line is, or the line is back on the new cylinder. Bolts are in snug. I didn't find a torque setting. Even on Clark's garage, it just said tight, you know, tighten it down. So I used the old German uh, torque setting of gut and tight. Aha. So they're gut and tight. I just snugged it down and then a little, get a little snuggy. And you don't want to overdo that. You can always tighten it more later if you have to. All right, so I've also picked up, well, I already had it. I had some hose here in the garage. So we will cut this down to size and use it. I got to find one more clamp. I'm one short. I need one more of these. So we'll find, probably have to go to the store just for one of these. Yay. But we can keep moving, so I'm going to steal one from my vacuum line for now. We'll put it on the clutch line, the feeder line, and get that hooked back up. So we'll loosen this. We'll have a little mess for a quick second while we swap it out. Put the new one in. And then we'll go back in and hook that pin back up. So I'll contort and finish it out. Okay. There we go. Your hose is in, you clean it up a little bit, clamped on, and then on that piece down there as well. All right, the pin is back in. You can see the bushing. I slid that on first, then I slid the uh, connector piece on over that, and then washer, then just push that clip back on. It was much easier to get on than it was to get off. Uh, I'm not going to put this plastic cover on yet until I have bled it and tested it to see if it's good. So, 
anyway we are installed we're going to bleed it out now and test it for pressure i'll probably make that a separate video but that is how you get your master cylinder installed so i tried to do each step of the way with you so hopefully this is helpful